good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever time of day it is, our viewers. This is a Facebook Live on the TEDx Kashmir page with Harriet Noble. Harriet, good afternoon. How are you? Hi, Richard. I'm good. How are you? Very well, very well. Well, thank you for joining us. Now, what's going on on this uh, Facebook Live is that um, we're going back to different speakers from our, our main event in June this year, um, asking them a couple of things. One is about their TEDx Kashmir experience, and secondly, to talk a bit about what they talked about. So, so Harriet, can you um, start off perhaps just by introducing yourself so that um, although many people have heard of you, perhaps some of the viewers here don't know who you are. So could you introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, hi, I'm Harriet Noble. I'm a uh, presenter and senior producer for a program on the BBC World Service called uh, World Hacks. We also have a podcast called People Fixing the World. And uh, what we do and what my talk was about is something called solutions journalism, which uh, is very briefly speaking. And if you want more detail, watch my talk, um, is about it's journalism about things that are solving problems. So we make a weekly radio program and podcast and also online videos about things all over the world that are solving all sorts of different problems. Okay, well, thank thank you very much for that. And um, uh, before we got into the content of your talk, um, could you describe a bit about your experience being a TEDx Kashmir speaker? What what that was like for you? Um, what what you remember, either positive, negative, or just strange, weird, or interesting for our viewers? I mean, broadly, I had a lovely time. It was a total honour, and uh, something I'll remember forever and look back on very fondly um i mean to start with very small negatives it was quite nerve-wracking i remember being nervous and um you know so it, it was i was aware that it was a, an, an honor and something i wanted to do well and wanted to kind of pay back the faith that you had in me by asking me to do it so that that would be my, my negative but but uh, put that putting that aside it was hugely a hugely positive experience. I mean, in the in the run up, working with you on my talk and, and kind of getting a chance to do something that I, I might not necessarily otherwise have done, which is really like sit back and think about the work I do, and uh, that was a, a really fantastic opportunity. And then just the weekend itself was just fantastic, lovely people. You were all very generous hosts. Um, uh, crack off was a lovely place to spend time in um i met some brilliant some yeah the other speakers were all fascinating people um and yeah just so you, you know you run a very very well-run ship um you know it all went fantastically and um i had a just great great time yeah, well, I suppose viewers might imagine that this is all very staged, and I knew you were going to say that, but th thank you for the... No, no, not at all. <laughs> thank you for the compliments. But it's interesting because obviously we get a, r a wide range of speakers, and sometimes they're people who aren't particularly well-known or experienced, and they're extremely nervous. But, you know, as a, as a BBC World Service journalist and ex-today program journalist it's interesting so what was it about that that made you feel nervous because for many people they might think well if you do the today program and the world service there's nothing to be scared about yes um i guess i mean i was never on air on the today program that might have been a different kettle of fish but when i'm presenting a, a program on the world service it's um i'm sat in a studio in front of a microphone with a colleague or two or sometimes no colleagues um and although i'm aware that i'm broadcasting to people it's quite easy to think that i actually think the best radio presenting is when you just imagine yourself speaking to one person both because you are essentially speaking to one person because people listen to it as one person and it's nice to think of radio as a conversation between two people the person that's listening, the listener and the person on the radio. Um, but that also helps because it actually I'm not it makes doesn't make me nervous at all because I just feel like I'm having a chat with someone when I'm sat in a studio. Um, but the the suddenly, you know, it's actually very different to be A, I'm not kind of I'm I'm presenting as a human and as a people can see me and see all of me rather than just hear my voice and with the audience 
just you know right there a room full of people that's um yeah that's that's just you know found that quite nerve-wracking but um once I got going I really enjoyed it and I hope I haven't quite been able to watch back all of my talk yet but people have told me that I don't seem nervous so <laughs> maybe I should have just lied and just said no I was totally confident it wasn't a problem at all um but yeah it's it was it was a you know, quite a kind of new experience to me doing that kind of talk so um yeah a few nerves well, I, 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 it was definitely worth it. And um, for those of you, for those people watching here or listening later who don't know what solutions journalism is, I, we always say to our speakers, we want them to talk about why their idea matters to them and why it matters to the audience. Because um, you know, the, the the whole point about TED and TEDx is getting across it, ideas that matter. And I've got my comments on that. But why why did it matter to you enough to get on a plane and fly over to Krakow to to give the to give the talk at TEDx Kashmir? What what is it about solutions journalism that that really sort of gets you out of bed in the morning? Yeah, I think it's an incredibly um there's 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 i think maybe sometimes when people and and i've done this in the past when you think of journalism you think that journalism is reporting on things that are going wrong and a lot of it is and and that is all very necessary but i am incredibly lucky to be reporting on things that are going right you know in there's there's two sides to every story if there's a um a, a natural disaster Obviously, first of all, you report on that and, and the damage that it's caused. But then there will be people after that trying to make it things better again, trying to repair the damage that's done. If, you know, there we have, you know, let's think of one of the problems in the world at the moment is air pollution. Yes, we should report on the damage that that's doing. But let's also report on the people who are trying to limit that damage and fix that damage and make air healthy for people and I get to do that latter part and I'm I think it's incredibly important that we kind of I think I say this in my talk that the role of journalists is to kind of shed light on what's happening in the world and to do that we need to to, to shed light on the things that are going well and and that's why I think that's what solutions journalism does and and that's why I think it matters. Okay, and, and why do you think it should matter? So, so that's what matters to you. What about for the audience? Why, why, do you think, uh, why do you think they should care about it? They should be interested in it? Because I think it's important for everyone to get as full a view of the world as, as possible. And through solutions journalism, people will. Okay, and um, the, the one thing that struck me, um, and one of the reasons I invited you, was the similarity between what I think you were doing in the, in, you are doing in the People Fixing the World and World Hacks um, program, and what TED and TEDx are trying to do. Do you, do you agree with that? Because I mean, because I, I slightly encourage you to say that. I remember in the rehearsals, I kept on trying to. Bring yes. The no. No, no, I think I think you're right. I mean, I think I think we we serve different functions within a similar area. So uh, at a TEDx event, um, you would pre people present ideas, and we um, uh, this, this, as solutions journalists, we then take those ideas and look a bit deeper into them and ask questions about them and 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 produce journalism about them. So I guess our um, subject matter probably has many overlaps. A lot of the stories we've done, I think, of people have done TEDx talks about them. By the the way we're um, approaching the the topics are different. Yes, and I, I I have to say that I did I did approach the, there was an interesting project you reported on from Iceland about social policy, where there mm. was the initiative to tackle many issues of. Icelandic teenagers being a bit lost with terrible sort of statistics and I, mm. I followed it and there was a farmer from Holland who was doing ecological farming and I, I did approach both of them about giving a talk but neither of them were available so I, in a way I was using using <laughs> people fixing the world as a, a possible 
source of source of ideas but i yeah I, and we use tedx as a possible source of ideas so we're, we're helping each other yeah although you did say that you prefer your to, you prefer your episodes to be kind of scoops don't you oh i mean it it, it, it really depends it really depends yeah mm. but one, one thing you said was that and, and people think of solutions journalism and they think about positive journalism and you drew a distinction didn't you that it's not mm. necessarily Good news, and perhaps I'm, this isn't going to be a very long interview. But can you explain what the difference in, is between positive journalism and solutions journalism? Um, so, I mean, positive journalism is probably wider, and that positive journalism is about anything that is positive, obviously. <laughs> Whereas, um, solutions journalism has to be about something that is solving a problem. I mean, that's quite a obvious distinction but that's it basically um and i think sometimes people get confused sometimes people think just if something is good news it's one for us and we're a bit pickier we want it to be to be honest it doesn't always have to be good news for us it just has to be solving a problem in in a kind of an interesting way um and that tends to be good news mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes and certainly i mean I the, the the tagline and the, the the mission of Ted is ideas worth spreading, but we very much tend to look for ideas that are being implemented. So this uh, is almost I have a sort of uh, my own personal interpretation is projects worth promoting, and I think that's extremely extremely mm. simple. There's also also the business of fact checking, which both both TED and TEDx and and you take very seriously because mm. you, you explained in your talk, which are, the main reason we're doing this interview, obviously it's nice to get your feedback and thanks for the compliments, but we're, we try to amplify amplify the number of people who get to see the talk because obviously it's not quite the same as going on the BBC World Service website in terms of traffic that um, you talked in terms of, um, of, of fact checking. And that's that's one of the things you put a lot of time and resources into, don't you? Yeah, because we're still journalists. I mean, we, yes, we're doing a slightly more positive or, you know, form of journalism, solutions journalism, but we're still, we still have responsibility as, as BBC journalists and as journalists in general to get our stories straight. And, you know, actually a lot of the, we'll quite often look into things that seem a bit too good to be true or, or, you know, seem like someone is, 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 is is fixing the world but you know our job is is to look into it investigate it and establish that is that really is the case because we only want to present things to our listeners and viewers that we kind of genuinely believe in as as well as um you know are, are interesting and are the people everyone everyone if someone has a passion project they're going to be really passionate about it, but we, it's our job to take a bit more of an objective stance and see are they are they actually doing doing good, and is, is this a is this something that we should kind of back or not not back necessarily, but kind of give a platform to. Mm -hmm. um, in your in your talk, you talked about a, a, a road safety project in mm. uh, in. Uh, I think in Kenya and Africa was it, yeah. uh, uh, and and that was a very nice project. Are, are there any others that you that maybe you didn't refer to in your talk that you'd like to tell people about, or is there anything coming up that you can scoop people that are, that haven't yet been broadcast? Interesting, interesting. Um, uh, or maybe you're not. I, I know. I I just did a, a trip to Japan and did a couple of really um interesting stories there. So they're they're coming up, they're coming up soon. Um. So that was a, a kind of fascinating, um, fascinating country to go on and go to, and a fascinating place to place to, um, to to do journalism. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I've gosh, uh, I mean, the most recent program I did um, was a couple of, on a couple of weeks ago. It was about an initiative in Paris to try and um, make Paris a bit greener. It's not a, a very green city doesn't have a lot of green space um and there's this this project where the the um any anyone can apply to the city authorities to just start a little street garden just anywhere on on pavements on walls on roofs um and there's thousands of these projects have, um have started in the past few years and um and it's i think it's it is making a 
a, a difference. Um, so that's a, that was a really fun, um, really fun, really fun piece to work on, and uh, I thought it made a nice program. So yeah, that's uh, that's on our podcast feed. If anyone wants to download it, people fixing the world. I listened to that, and actually, I've got a I've got a meeting next week with the head of innovation of Krakow City Council. I, and that's one something I'm going to discuss with her. Because oh, great. It's such a good idea. It's so yeah. easy. And, it, you know, people love gardening. So, yes, I, and it's lo lo low budget, high impact, yeah. and bringing, mm. people, bringing people close to the government. And, you know, at a time when many people are so sort of appalled by the way governments behave, or there's this huge distance between citizens and government, it's very nice to have examples where things are working, working a bit yeah. better. Okay, Harriet. Well, yeah. thanks for, for your time on this Saturday afternoon. Is, is there any final message you'd like to give to the TEDx Kashmir audience or anyone else watching this anywhere else in the world? Oh, no. I mean, as I kind of said in the beginning, thank you. I mean, thank you, Richard, for asking me to do it. And, and you know, you put a lot of, well, so much work into it all. So thank you. And, and there's so many people, or pe the people who watch, you know, were there and, and, and watch it online won't realise it's like the number of people that are working really hard to, to make it happen. So thank you to all of you. And um, yeah, it was a, a fan, fantastic experience. Yes, well, there's an expression in Pol Polish, uh, which means sort of mutual admiration society. And we have to be careful because I'm, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to thank, 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 thank you for all the work time and effort you put in. But but it, it, it is a joint a joint a joint effort and um neither our speakers nor anyone involved in the production of the event is paid so it's very much a, a labor of love but i think it, it really was worth it and i very much appreciate that so well thank you for your time coming onto the show thank you to anyone watching and if you are watching this and you want to you want to do something more there are two things you can do one is share the share this interview across your social media so that other people can see it and the other thing of course other two things are of course to watch and listen to harriet's talk and of course start watching or listening to uh people fixing the world and world hacks thank you very much indeed bye-bye thank you thanks richard bye